I have a question. Are you seeing a lot more activity from people looking at homes on your website? If you have IDX on your site, I bet the answer is yes. Ever since the pandemic hit, headlines have told us that people are spending more time than ever looking at homes online. Is some of that just casual browsing and people passing the time? Of course it is. But many agents I've talked to in the past couple months say they are getting more online leads now than they have in a long time. And anecdotally, I can share that my wife has picked up more IDX leads in the past two months than she did in all of 2019. That's why we're talking and teaching online lead conversion. This is part two of our series with Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales, two of the best in the business when it comes to getting and converting online leads. So if you wanna take advantage of all that extra online home search activity, you are in the right place. This is The Walkthrough. Hey everyone, I'm Matt McGee, editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center and your host every week right here on The Walkthrough. On this show, you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created The Walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. You can get in touch with me anytime by calling 415-322-3328. Just leave a voicemail at that number. Or you can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. I do read and hear all the messages that come in. And it's great to be back after taking last week off for the holidays. I hope you and your family had a good and safe 4th of July. As I mentioned earlier, this is part two of our conversation with Homelight Elite agents Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales, and some breaking news. By popular demand, we're going to add part three to this series next Monday. Several of you sent in great questions last week after part one. Jackie and Elmer have agreed to answer those questions, plus any new ones that come in after today's show. I'll have more on all that, how you can contribute, get your questions in at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. If you missed part one, real quick intro. Elmer Morales and Jackie Soto run the eHomes brokerage in Southern California. Last year, 38% of their business came from online leads. This year, they expect it to be about 60 to 65%. They are Homelight Elite Agents, which is a program reserved for the top 1% of agents on our platform. They're also best of Zillow, so they know what they're doing with online leads. In part one, Jackie and Elmer walked us through their systems and processes, how they bring accountability into it. They told us exactly what happens when a new online lead comes in, and they shared the ALM script that they use in the first call with a new buyer. That's appointment, location, motivation. Listen to this from part one. The, the opening line goes exactly like this. Hey, Matt, this is Elmer with the eHomes team. You inquired on 123 Banana Street. How soon did you want to see it? But they didn't call it to talk about financing or anything. They want to talk about when I can go see the house. So it's appointment, then it's location. So Matt, what is it about uh, 123 Banana Street that has you moving to this neighborhood? You'll share that. I'll gather that information. And then Matt, the next question is we're shooting now for motivation, right? And then Matt, so what has you moving to 123 Banana Street? And then you'll give me motivation. And then that's it. That's it. We're not trying to collect any more information. We cut it off right there and we're off to, to the appointment. So that's a taste of what we covered in part one. If you haven't listened to that yet, definitely recommend you go back and catch up when this episode is over. It sets the stage for what we're talking about today, which is how eHomes nurtures and converts online leads. So listen for Jackie and Elmer to explain the VIP program that they offer to buyers and sellers to convert those leads, if and when they ever stop communicating with leads, and what they had to change in order to do a better job of converting home light leads. As you listen, 
jot down any questions you have. And then before we wrap up today, I'll let you know how to send those in for next week's show. But first, here is part two of my conversation with Homelight Elite Agents, Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales. When an online lead comes in, chances are they are getting replies, certainly with Homelight, they are getting replies from yourselves and then other agents as well. So what do you guys do to convince the buyer or seller that you're the ones they should be working with? That's funny you say that. So I think um, it goes back to providing value up front. You want to provide as much value up front. You want to be an expert in that neighborhood. When we were on um, a podcast recently with Brad Inman, he said, you want to tattoo that zip code on your forehead, especially in this market. So you know that that lead when they're shopping online, they're connecting with multiple agents. They're not just connecting with you. It's likely that they're going to call someone someone else or they have already called someone else. So how impressive are you going to be to be able to connect with them, to show them that you're going to be successful to get them into that home? Also, I'd say leadership. So coming down, I wanted to circle back to Elmer's script about getting them to the um, home sooner than later because of the current market. I think a lot of agents aren't brave enough to be able to push for that and to lead their clients. When you become the leader in the relationship, I think that's when you're really able to establish the trust and the value that the consumer needs. Just two years ago, we plugged in a VIP buyer's presentation and we did the same for the sellers as well. So with the buyer's pre- VIP buyer's presentation, we're able to sit the buyer down on the first appointment we it's it's a seven page seven to eight pager <laughs> we keep adding to it but we're going we're going over the benefits of working with with our agents the e-homes team so we break it down for the consumer the value in working with us is the, the the other issue that we're having with online leads is we kind of just door openers when we didn't have a presentation we were just opening the door for the consumer and we were letting them walk through the home and we, were, <coughs> we weren't really presenting any value to them. So with the VIP buyer presentation, we're talking about home warranties. We're talking about home inspections. We're talking about the pre-approval process and why it's so important. And it, we just really dig into the process. And by the time we're done with that 10 minute presentation, all the value has been presented to them. So you've then given them value at the appointment in regards to your neighborhood knowledge. You're an expert in the area. But then you've also sat them down and given them the commitment as an agent to them. What are the expectations? So at that point, you've empowered them to make great decisions. You've kind of laid it all out on the table, which is what everyone really wants. You want clarity and transparency. So some leads that come in, obviously, we're talking about this, you know, get them to the appointment right away. They're interested in seeing a house. But sometimes you get a lead, right, that is further out in the process. Maybe they're not going to be ready for what, six months or eight months or a year. When you have a lead like that, do you still want to meet with them right now? Let me say that. That happened to me yesterday. (laughs) So yesterday, um, I'm not really out on appointments very much now, but one of our agents had a big appointment and it needed to be moved up because they had multiple offers and they couldn't wait until Saturday. So they moved it up. And unfortunately, the agent was busy. So I showed up. We showed up. We got them into the home. Uh, they aren't necessarily ready right now. They're trying to find the one that they love right before they pull the trigger. Um, that is going to be a very tailored lead that we're going to nurture because when they are ready, they are going to come back to us. And the way that that process works, I will let Elmer talk about it. Yeah. So we, and again, like Jackie just said, you absolutely want to force what well, you want to press for the face to face because most agents, it's been, it's a proven fact that most consumers use the first agent that they meet. So if we want to go off of statistics, then we want to take our chances and meet with the consumer, no matter how far out. And you also have to have confidence in your nurture process that you're going to do, you know, make all the right phone calls. You're going to send all the, the, right, the right amount of text messages to stay in front of the consumer. So when they do decide to make the move, that you're the first person that they're going to be calling. You mentioned the nurture process. Tell me what that looks like when you get one of these leads that isn't ready to buy or sell right away. Okay, so the nurture process, it's really simple. So number one, we have to, the agent has to be, the agent that talked to the consumer or met with the consumer has to decide, is this a lead I want to hang on to and I want to nurture? Or is this a lead I want to hand off to the ISA department? 
Either way, the nurture process is going to look the exact same way. They're still going to be receiving text messages from us, just not as frequently as they might have if when they first came in. Because when they first come in, they're getting text messages like every day. So maybe it's a text message once every 30 days. It's definitely an email once every 30 days. And then the agents expect it, depending on how far out they are, to either contact them once every two weeks or once every 30 days. At the end of the day, we need to see notes input into this into our CRM that tells us what's going on with the consumer with, with the consumer. And we tell the agent, when you're writing these notes, I want you to write it like you're explaining it to a five-year-old. I want you to be as detailed as possible. That way, when you jump on the next phone call, you know exactly what's going on with the lead and you can maybe pick up on something that uh, you know will help you build a quick rapport on the next conversation. Let me jump in here for just a moment. Elmer made a really important point right there about agents leaving detailed notes in their CRM about every client. That's huge for helping to convert an online lead and keep a deal moving forward. One other thing about using your CRM heavily. Before almost every conversation I do for the walkthrough, I do a prep call with the guest or guests in this case to sort of set the stage for what topics we should discuss. During the prep call for this episode, I don't remember if it was Jackie or Elmer, but one of them shared a great tip about CRMs that unfortunately didn't come up again during the actual podcast conversation. If you're using your CRM correctly, the agents on your team or your brokerage should never wake up in the morning and not know what they need to do that day. eHomes uses Commissions Inc. as their CRM. With that and many other CRMs, you can set up daily or weekly tasks that are tied to each lead or client. I know a lot of you are already doing this, so keep it up. I hope it's helping your business grow. For those who aren't doing it, it's like adding reminders in your CRM. So an agent, as they're working each lead, can set up a task that says something like, call Sally about financing on Tuesday. And then, When you start your workday on Tuesday, boom, all your tasks are right there in the CRM. So you don't have to wonder what to do that day. It sounds so simple. And again, I know a lot of you are already doing this. For those of you that aren't, it's a really powerful way to make sure you're not letting leads slip through the cracks. We'll talk more about tools later in this episode, but let's get back to the conversation. Elmer and Jackie are walking us through their process for nurturing leads. What are you saying in the email or text that goes out? Are you Is it just, hey, just checking in with you, what's going on? Or are you sending out like actual content, like a monthly market update or anything like that? Yeah, so on the emails, it's, it's like market updates and they're getting property notifications that are tailored to what it is that they inquired on. And then on the text messages, a little bit more personal. Hey, hey Matt, just checking in with you. Um, you know, this property might have come up that I think you might be interested in. I know you're not ready for the home search, but I just wanted to check in and, and see if there's anything I can do for you. So again, we know there's six months out, but you still want to plug in, um, you know, like the dangling carrot, just in case they're ready to pull the trigger now. And how long does a nurture program last for a typical lead that comes in? Are we, are you, is there ever a point at which you say, all right, we're done with this person. It's just not going to happen. Not until they ask us to stop calling and stop texting. (laughs) If they ask us to stop calling, we'll probably email them. Yeah, so most of our programs do end at the six-month mark. But what we do is we'll we'll put them in a pool, and then we'll have a drip campaign that we'll plug that pool into to try to revive the leads again. So there's always something going on with the leads. Like No one's ever just put in a place where they're not going to be contacted again unless they've asked us not to. And you'd find that usually if you're providing value, like you're tailoring the experience for them, there's automation, but there's also some personalized touches. There has to be personalized touches in the, throughout the process, right? Uh, to let them know that you care. But you'd find that if you're providing value, they're not going to ask you to stop calling or stop texting. They're going to want to see that stuff because they do want to get there somehow, some way. Our record is a 1,263-day-old lead that we converted. So. No, 12, that's um, quickly, my math, my math skills, that's like three and a half years or so? Yeah, three and a half years of a lead that we converted. Everybody's trying to beat that. So we dig into the old leads um, to try to revive. Was that a buyer or do you remember it was a buyer or seller or? I actually closed it. It was a buy, a seller needing to sell and then buy. 
So they, it was two transactions, 1,263 days. Well, wow. so the folks that are listening to this, if that get frustrated after, you know, 90 days of no contact, <laughs> if that is an inspirational to like never give up, nothing will tell you to never give up, right? Like 1,200 right. plus days. That's incredible. Oh wow. Okay, so we so we've talked about we've talked about sort of the the internal structures you've had. We've talked about the culture that you're trying to set up. We've talked about I mean, you just walked us through the the what you say and what goes out when a lead comes in and then how you nurture them. Now, I, and as I mentioned, leads come in from different sources. So, how much of this is customized versus, you know, for a home light lead versus a Zillow lead versus an IDX lead? Do you have to do a lot of that? Is it just in the scripts? I'd say the script is the same across the board, except for maybe something like Facebook, where your ads may not be listing specific. You may just be putting kind of something, you know, get prepared to purchase your home or a, you put your VIP buyer program out there. They're kind of just inquiring to get started. You know, those are a little further out. So you're not trying to set an appointment there, right? You're not trying to meet them at the home. You're trying to educate those people and essentially nurture those people so, so when they're ready. Um, but otherwise, we are trying to set the appointment and we're going through ALM on pretty much every lead. Even on the listing Facebook ads that we put out, you want to set that appointment as well. You, you guys, uh, and, and Jackie, you mentioned this a little bit earlier in the conversation, you guys were on um, a podcast with Brad Inman a couple months ago and our founder, Drew, was there with you too. And you mentioned that with home light leads, and I don't know if this was just home light or maybe it was all leads, but you mentioned that you had to sort of change in the beginning how you worked those leads in order to, I guess, convert them better. Do you recall what that was about and what you had to change? The one thing we did we did, we did have to change with home light is we had to we had to step our game up because I found out that home light was sending the lead out to two other agents. So when I was going to listing appointments, I was interviewing against, you know, two of the local experts. So I had to show up better prepared. Um, I had to have a better understanding of the market. And I had to show up and deliver the best presentation I could possibly deliver. So I had to up my game for my listing. My listing presentation had to become better. My sales skills had to become a lot better. Um, and, and just, you know, just be better prepared in general. Um, so, and then we started adding uh, a package delivery prior to my showing up. So, and, and just to improve the overall experience. And that started getting me better results. When you say a package delivery, you're sending them sort of a, you know, a listing presentation type package. You're sending them information about yourself. Yeah, we do that before the listing appointment. You'll get that package. But he's talking about um, kind of after the appointment, we have different touches that we do that we think other agents may be forgetting just to improve the experience. So after the listing appointment, every consumer, every uh, potential client gets a cookie. They get a cookie yeah. sent out to them from send out cards, something super simple, right? But it's kind of above and beyond. When you go to like Double Tree and they give you the cookie, how do you feel, right? It's all about the feeling and the emotion. And then when your listing sign goes up, uh, we we curated this little cute seller's box that has some e-home swag. It has the list of what to expect in your listing process. It it's above and beyond, I'd say, for what average agents are doing in the area. And that's where we were able to improve uh, because everyone can generate their sales skills. They can, yeah. they can learn different tricks, but it's what are you doing that's kind of outside the box that we went above and beyond to do. And, and, uh, and to discuss the package that we deliver prior to the appointment, we deliver this bright orange envelope with just some marketing items in there. And again, it discusses our relationship with Homeline to create uh, credibility. Depending on where the lead pro come from, we 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 tailor it to um, the lead source uh, on the items we put in there. But we keep it simple. And this circles back to how everything's going to referral base. So these larger companies are realizing that they have to connect with the top agents in the area. So you're no longer just up against you know someone's uncle or brother. You're up against the top agents that these companies have decided to partner with. Yeah. And let me, I wanted to share, Matt, just a quick uh, story. So when I started sending out that opening package, that big orange envelope, I swear to you, every appointment that I showed up to, that envelope would be sitting on the dinner table. So I knew it was being opened and I knew it was being read. 
um, which again creates credibility, instant credibility and rapport. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying the walkthrough, we'd appreciate it if you tell the real estate agents in your network about us. Even more, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Your feedback helps us get better, and in some cases can also help new listeners find and hear us. And when we get around to having you on the show, the more listeners, the better, right? It's interesting that you mentioned the uh, the gift idea. Um, we just had uh, Abby Walters on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she was talking about her referral business. And she's also using send out cards uh, to uh, for her referral leads. And here you guys are using it for your online leads, which I think speaks to the fact that yeah, we, you know, we're calling Homelight uh, an online lead, but it is kind of it's a it's a referral based online lead. Like we have already talked to the person we send them to you. It's so it's sort of this this kind of blend of online lead. It's not true online lead. It's a referral based. Anyway, let me ask you this this question because um, Abby mentioned this on the podcast and a couple other agents that that we've had. Uh, we just had Rob Henderson on the podcast and he sort of talked about it too. There are a lot of agents that don't like the online leads because the online lead is, you know, maybe they're just looking or they're not serious or they just wanted to see the pretty pictures of the homes and all that sort of stuff. And they just get, you know, they look at it as a bad experience or a quote, bad lead. What's your guys' response to that? That's why we set the expectation way ahead of time when we're interviewing the agents because we're huge on mindset, if you don't have the right mindset walking into it, I believe in the law of attraction. If you're walking into that conversation, any conversation negatively, you're going to have a negative outcome. So walking into, when you answer that phone, expecting this person on the line to be ready to write an offer, that's how I pick up every single phone call. That's how I connect with every single client. They're ready to buy right now. Um, setting that expectation is huge for me personally. Yesterday, I played a call on our huddle. I mean, that in fact does happen. Some of these leads are ready to purchase a home right away, but you got to take the good with the bad, right? You got to be able to service every single lead if these companies are going to trust you with their referrals. I, I, you know, online leads is something that we've been working on for seven years now. So the one thing we discovered is an online lead is only bad if you're 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 not prepared to deal with the nurture and how to answer phone calls and speak to lead. If you don't have systems in place, Matt, then that lead source is going to be really bad. Just like if I was door knocking and, and weren't, weren't following the proper guidelines to door knock, like I'm not going to get the results I want. So I'm going to hate it. You got to be prepared. You got to have systems in place to get the results you're, you're looking for. We have a saying here and it's, there is no bad lead. There is yeah. no bad lead. At the end of the day, that connection is so valuable, whether they're ready right now, whether they're never ready. If you had a connection with a human being and you serviced him well, guess what? That human being has a mother, a father, sisters, brothers that are friends, coworkers that may want to buy or sell. And if you met this person and provided value at that appointment or on that phone call, they may think of you if you can nurture this relationship well enough as the professional to refer business to. And I know with Homelight, you have uh, you have a representative that uh, is in charge of working and partnering with you. I assume, well, I, my wife used to advertise on Zillow, so I know that, that you would get a Zillow rep. Tell me about what you do to to nurture these uh, these relationships that you have with the representatives. And is that important? Very important. So... Our relationship business, and I'm doing air quotes, I know you guys won't see this on the podcast, but our relationship business is not just with the client. Our relationship business is with our referral partners. And at the end of the day, these bigger companies are our referral partners. So making sure that you have clear expectations um, from them, and then you're able to meet those expectations that you, and you ask for help too. You know, if you're confused about something that you have that great communication with this person who has been put in their place, their job is literally to help you succeed with their platform. So I think one thing that is a huge misconception in our industry is that you can't change your rep. Um, 
So I'm sorry for any rep that may get fired because of this, but you know, you can ask for another rep. If they're not serving you at the end of the day, this bigger company wants to switch you out to someone that's going to help you grow with them. Yeah. I mean, it's important. It's a relationship and you're going to be in touch with them in, on a regular basis. And sometimes it's just, you get matched with a person that may not be the right, uh, the right fit. So that's, yeah. If you, if you can ask for somebody else, that makes perfect sense. One thing that I haven't asked you about, and I, I hope we can get into a little bit before we wrap up, to make all this possible, I'm sure you have a number of different uh, tools that you are using. So we talked about the automated text and the automated emails. Um, obviously, there's CRM involved. Can you give us sort of a, a snapshot of some of the tools that you use to make this happen? I think listeners would find that kind of interesting. Uh, the CR, So the CRM that we use is Commissions, Inc., and we've been using them for over uh, three years now. For the automated automated text, we use my good buddy Jesse B's company of Call Action, and they uh, they do all the all the uh, automated texting, and they, and they help us route the lead into our Call Action system. I mean, our commissions in system. We use Closio for transaction uh, management, and we make the best of our um, brokerment. Did you catch those tools that Elmer just mentioned? I'll recap real quick in case you're writing them down. They use Commissions Inc. as their CRM. They use Call Action to handle the automated texts that get sent to new leads. And then that also gets routed back into Commissions Inc. as well, their CRM. For transaction management, they use Close.io, Closio, which recently rebranded as Close.com. And then the last tool that Elmer mentioned is Broker Mint, which is a back office management platform. And obviously, their tool belt also includes specific mobile apps like the Homelight app for managing Homelight leads, the Zillow app for managing Zillow leads, and so forth. So that's a look at the tools they're using. And now back to the conversation, which is just starting to wrap up. What Final words of advice would you give for agents that have struggled with online leads in the past? What, you know, what would you say to them to maybe give them some encouragement to try again and perhaps do it differently? Two things from me, and it's going to be the first one: back to mindset. Get your mindset right. You need to get that out of you. Get your mind out of the gutter. You need to treat every connection as a high quality connection. You need to know that if they're not going to buy a house today. They're going to know someone that's going to buy a house or they're going to buy a house later on. At the end of the day, you're the professional in their eyes. So connect with these people and guide them if you can. Change your mindset walking into the conversation. That's number one. <laughs> number two is um, find a team that you can learn from. So there are people out there doing this and doing this successfully. So mirroring, finding someone that you can shadow or mirror and learn from them, that's going to be key too. And I would tell you, um, having an understanding of, of what the cost of an online lead is, I hear this all the time. Um, agents will ask, hey, Elmer, what's a better lead? Is a Facebook lead better or is a home light lead better? And I would tell you a home light lead's better. And they're going to tell me, but I got to pay them a 25% referral. And the Facebook lead, I can generate a thousand Facebook leads for $2 a lead. But you have to take into consideration the cost of the nurturing that lead to having to hire an ISA for eight hours a day to nurture those thousand leads. The cost of that lead went from five dollars now to ninety five dollars. So you got it. You have to measure and you have to track every all your spend to really determine what um, you know what the cost is of, of a certain specific type of lead source. So I, I think that's where the misunderstanding comes from agents. Um, when they say, hey, Facebook is the way to go because it's $2 a lead. No, it's not. It's not $2. Wait till you have to spend, you know, the rest of your summer uh, calling those leads and nurturing those leads. You'll realize that it's not just two bucks. Take a lot of your time. Our job yeah. is to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to, you have to understand what's going to be better use of your time. So there you go, two episodes dedicated to converting online leads, and we're not even done yet. Jackie and Elmer are coming back next week to answer your questions about online leads, and I'll discuss more in just a moment about how to submit a question. First, how about we do some takeaways from this week's episode? Here's what stood out to me. Number one, Jackie and Elmer talked about bringing value to the lead from the very first contact, because it's so easy 
to just become a door opener for the consumer, right? An agent who just lets people into this house, then lets them into the next house, and then lets them into the house after that, and so on and so forth. eHomes has a VIP buyer and seller presentation. They go over it during the first meeting to set themselves apart from other agents, to have a better shot at converting the lead. Number two, their nurture process runs for about six months, and then after that, leads go into a long-term drip system. They don't stop reaching out unless the lead specifically tells them not to. And did you catch their record for the oldest lead they ever converted? Elmer says he had one who took 1,263 days from the initial contact. 1,263. Boy, if that isn't a testament to uh, sticking with it and not giving up on a lead. Boy, nothing is. Number three, I liked when they talked about even if the lead isn't planning to buy or sell soon, you still want to meet them right away. Why is that? Well, because most consumers will use the first agent they meet. And then number four, I asked them about, you know, quote, bad online leads, people who aren't serious buyers or sellers. And did you catch what they said? Elmer talked about how having the right systems and processes mean there are no bad leads. And Jackie said the same thing, but she came at it in terms of mindset. When you first talk to an online lead, go into it expecting that they're ready to write an offer. She said, if you expect a bad experience, you'll probably get one. Okay, if you have questions about today's show or about part one, Jackie and Elmer have agreed to come back next week and answer them on what will be part three of this series on converting online leads. But here's the deal. We're going to record that part three conversation tomorrow, Tuesday, July 14th. That's tomorrow if you're listening to this on Monday, the day that this episode comes out. If you're listening to it later in the week, I'm sorry, but the window is probably already closed. Uh, So get your questions to me as soon as possible, okay? There's two ways you can do it, and I'll repeat both of these. Number one, leave me a voicemail at 415-322-3328. Or you can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. Let me give those out one more time. The voicemail number, 415-322-3328. The email address is walkthrough at homelight.com. We'll take the questions that come in and ask Jackie and uh, Elmer to answer them for us. And that will be next week's episode. So that's all for this week. Thanks to Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales for joining me. Thank you for listening. My name's Matt McGee. Remember, at Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created the walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. We'll talk to you again next week, everyone. Bye-bye.